I'm joined by Mike Chiesa, who takes on Anthony Pettis at UFC 226 in July. Uh, how are you doing, Mike? Uh, what are you up to today? I'm doing really good. It's Friday over here, so I've just got you know three practices on the agenda today, so I'm just getting geared up for all three of those. Nice. And uh, you've been spending a lot of time at the uh, Performance Institute, haven't you? Uh, what's it been like kind of uh, looking at those facilities, using those facilities there? It's been amazing. I mean, it's a it's a world class facility. It's a world class staff. Um, you know, it's 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 really easy to invest yourself into their program. You know what I mean? When they tell you something, it's really easy to believe it. When you know you have a workout in front of you, it's really easy to just like buy into it and just just do what do what they ask you to do. And uh, you know, the results have been amazing. I mean, I'm I've been by the time I fight in July. I'll have been in camp for four months at the UFC PI for the six months this year. So, I mean, I'm in phenomenal shape right now, just really ready to fight. And, of course, this fight was rebooked from UFC 223. Uh, obviously, you weren't able to, to fight. We won't kind of get, you know, too much into that. We all know kind of what happened there. But, I mean, how how can you sum up kind of like the aftermath of that? I mean, you weren't able to fight. Um You'd had done this, you know, long training camp. What was that like? Are you able to kind of sum that up and, uh, you know, the aftermath, how it made you feel? Uh, I can say I was devastated. You know what I mean? I really, I was really geared up and ready to fight. Um, you know, I, I prepared well for that camp. I had my whole team out there in Brooklyn, my mom, my family, everybody. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was really unfortunate circumstances. And, you know, um, you know, the residual damage from that was, was pretty big. You know, I had to go home and take, force myself to take some time off, which was just unfortunate. You know, I put a lot of work in and uh, I didn't get to showcase everything that, that I'd been working working on, you know. So, um, you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. They rebooked me. I got cleared to start training again. And, you know, I'm here you know, three weeks away, 22 days away from, from the same fight, from the Pettis fight. And that was the big thing too. Is is I was really I was worried that we were going to lose the matchup. I want to fight Anthony. I want to I want the opportunity to to go against a former world champion and test myself. You know what I mean? And I was I was really worried that I was going to lose that opportunity. And I'm glad the UFC was able to still make that happen. Mm, definitely. And and at the time, his name was put forward to step in for Max Holloway uh, against Khabib. Um, did you? Was it disappointing, or did you? How did you feel, kind of, when uh, his name was put forward? Because obviously that was your fight, and then you being not able to fight, and him getting potentially an opportunity to fight to the for the title. How did that make you feel? Yeah, that was that was kind of a crushing blow. Um, you know, there's more to that. I can't I can't really say too much, but I will say that when uh, when the word was out that Anthony was going to fight uh, could be for the title, I was pretty devastated. You know what I mean? I was the highest light. I was the highest ranked lightweight on the card next to Khabib. So that, that was a tough pill to swallow. Um, but you know what? Uh, Ally Quinta, my man, he stepped up. He put on a hell of a fight. And, uh, you know, Al's my buddy. So I, I, I was happy to see the opportunity go to him. And uh, Conor McGregor had his first court hearing. Are you following that at all? No, you know what? I just, I try not to, I'm not, I'm keeping myself invested in my fight. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I've heard I heard from many people about the court date and this and that. And, you know, I'm just I'm focused on Anthony Pettis. I'm focused on July 7th. Um, I'm not I'm not I'm not putting any attention to Connor's litigation you know, and stuff. So I'm just I'm focused on my fight focused on myself. So we had this fight rebooked for UFC 226, which again is another great card. Um, how happy were you to be rebooked on such a great card, you know, in International Fight Week as well? Really happy. Um, you know, I've never lost when I've trained in Las Vegas. Um, I've never lost when I fought in Las Vegas. Las Vegas is my adopted home. Um, you know, I'm happy to be here. It's going to be great. You know, I can just do my old training camp and I don't have to worry about you know, traveling to the East Coast or anything like that. You know, I just literally just make one small adjustment. I just switch from from staying at John Wood's house to switching to the hotel. And uh, you know, I'm only doing that to keep that fight week feel. You know, I don't want to I don't want to seem too comfortable. You know what I mean? I want to keep that fight week feel. But uh, you know, it's it's been great. You know, so this is this is just a good opportunity. I'm glad this fight's getting put on a big card. This is a huge fight. I mean, Anthony brings it every time. I bring it every time. 
you know, we're on the main card, so it's, it, it's an honor. You know, I'm really excited to be a part of this big, this big card and be a part of International Fight Week. A former champion, uh, Anthony Pettis, um, what do you think he brings to the table? What do you think he does well? What do you think maybe he doesn't do as well? Well, one thing he does well is obviously, you know, the Showtime kick. He's a good striker, um, but I think that he's a better grappler than he is a striker. I mean, the guy's ground game is very underrated. Um, He's got. He's really springy with his submissions. He really has fast catches, so that's something I need. I need to be very aware of. Um, in terms of his striking, I feel. I feel very prepared for whatever he brings to the table. I've been training with Yair Rodriguez out here in Las Vegas, so I'm getting a really good look um, in terms of like the spinning attacks and the taekwondo background and stuff. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm very. I'm, I'm very well prepared for whatever Anthony brings to the table. Um, you know, and all uh, the, the weaknesses that I think he has, I'll exploit on fight night. Don't want to reveal too much in this interview, but I know I'm going to hands, have my hands full, but I'm very well prepared to get this win, and I know I'm going to get the job done. And in having back-to-back camps for the same opponent, has anything changed the kind of the second time around going into this camp for, for UFC 226, or has kind of things stayed the same as, as what you did before? Stay the same. You know what I mean? It's not like there's really no game plan. You know, I'm not a game plan fighter. I'm just the type of guy that I just train hard. I try to broaden my skill set and just become a better mixed martial artist every time I train for a fight. I don't really like to gear my training around another guy. You know what I mean? I like to just get better as a whole. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just continuing to improve every day, um, pushing my limits. You know what I mean? My my physical conditioning right now is through, through the roof. I mean, I feel like I could run through a brick wall right now and uh, do it 10 times over. So, uh you know, we're just, we're just, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're just, we're just continuing to do what we were doing last camp. And that's just get better. How eager are you? Obviously, you, you know, you had that kind of long wait, as it were, to get back into the octagon. So how, how eager are you to, to kind of uh, put on a show and get back in there now? I'm eager to compete. You know, it's been a while. It's been since the Kevin Lee fight. Um, you know, I'm ready just ready to get back to the win column. You know, I haven't won a fight since April 2016. You know, I only had one fight since then. You know, I had my back injury that pulled me out of the Ferguson fight. You know, I had the Kevin Lee fight and had the crummy circumstances with the officiating. Um, so I'm just ready to get back in there. I mean, I want to put on a show for the fans. I want to put on a show for my family and and uh, all this training, all this preparation. I'm really ready to put it to the test. So, um, and then, you know, and I also want to close the chapter. I've been, I've been focused on Anthony Pettis for six months now. Mm. And I'm, I'm just ready to be done with him. I'm ready to go out there, finish him, and move on to the next guy, you know? Mm. And like we said, it's a great card. You've got DC and Stipe headlining. What do you think about that fight? And uh, what's your prediction for that? Uh, this is an awesome fight. It's, it's a fight for the fans. It's a super fight. Fans love super fights. Fans love to see champion versus champion, the collision of two weight classes, and what, you know, no better athletes than Steve Baby Ochich and, and Daniel Cormier. Um, you know, I go, I'm 100% with Daniel Cormier. I've been a fan of DC since I was in high school, you know, so I'm team DC all the way. I think he gets the job done. He's undefeated at heavyweight. Um, this is his first time back to heavyweight since 2012, I believe. And, you know, the thing with DC is he doesn't have to worry about his weight cut. Even when he was doing the strenuous weight cuts, he was still going out there and like fighting at a crazy pace for five rounds and really pushing it. So I think that him being a heavyweight is just going to make him that much more of an athlete. You know what I mean? He's going to have, you know, it's been so long since he's fought at heavyweight and he's broadened his skill set so much in the last six years. I think he's going to be a scary guy to deal with on fight night. Hmm. And then in the co-main, uh, Max Holloway and Brian Ortega, what do you think of that? Again, it's another great fight. And what's your prediction for that? The best is blessed. Um, you know, me and Max Holloway, we fought our first, we shared the locker room for our first UFC wins. He, he, uh, it was at the tough finale, June 1st, 2012. So we had the winning locker room. Maybe we'll be in the same locker room on fight night on July 7th, but Max is a hell of a competitor. So is Brian T city Ortega. Don't get me wrong. Brian T city. I mean, his ground game is vaunted. That guy is dangerous. I mean, he has. And he's shown that he's got he's got more than just a ground game. I mean, he knocked out Frankie Edgar, first guy to ever finish Frankie Edgar in the octagon. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a hell of a fight. I think that one's going to take fight of the night, um, but I'm going to have to go with Blessed. 
Mm, okay, and, and you had your uh, Fox debut on the panel for UFC Liverpool. What was that like? I, I, I didn't get to see it. I was there covering. So, so how did you know? How was it? I had a blast. Um, it's something that it's something I've been passionate about wanting to do for a long time. I've been very vocal about wanting to get behind the desk and really test my knowledge. Um, I'm a student of the sport, 100% day in day out. Whether I'm studying for a fight of my own or whether there's a fight card coming up, I'm always very knowledgeable about you know the, the current world affairs in the mixed martial arts world. So I really wanted to test my knowledge, and I got the opportunity to do that. And uh, from what I hear, I perform very well. And uh, I think the only I think the only thing they weren't happy about was my mullet, but yeah, <laughs> it's okay. I'm sure they can cope with that. Yeah, you know, and that's a, it's a temporary thing. They give me, they put me behind the desk more. I can make some adjustments as long as I can keep my beard. We're good, but you know, it, it was it was just a great experience. Do you think we'll see more of you then doing doing that role? Yes, you'll see more of me there for sure. And uh, you know, there's some other things coming up. I can't say too much, but um, you know, I got another opportunity that's presented itself that uh, I'll be shooting not this week, not next week, but the week after. So uh, not that's all I can say. All I can okay. say is I'm going to be a part of a pretty cool project with the UFC. Really excited to be a part of it, and uh, yeah, that's that's all I can say about that. Nice. My man of mystery. I can't. There's yeah. a lot of things I can't say a lot about. I got to keep things under wraps. Yeah, no, I understand. I understand. And um, so obviously, you know, you you said about your knowledge of the UFC. There's loads of hot topics at the moment, and um, and you of course were covering UFC Liverpool on the panel there. What did you think of the? Uh, the whole wake up issue surrounding Darren Till and, and the kind of current topic at the moment, you know, Dana White saying about taking away the early weigh-ins. What's your views on, on that topic at the moment? You can't punish the guys that are doing it right. You want to go back to late weigh-ins because a couple of guys are being, you know, there's some people that are unprofessional and you think a couple extra hours are going to, are going to benefit them to make weight. That doesn't do you know, they said 3% of the roster has missed weight since they started the early weigh-ins. But what about the other 97%? I've only talked to one guy, and I've only seen one guy, say that they want the late weigh-ins. Everybody else that I've talked to, everything I've seen on Twitter and social media, everybody really wants to keep the early weigh-ins. Um, you know, what was unfortunate for Darren Till is on his Instagram, he had posted a comment the day before weigh-ins saying that he was 98 kilos at that moment, the day before Wayne's. So for the Americans watching this, that translates to 216 pounds. That's 46 pounds the day before Wayne's. That's too much. I don't, you know, yes, he's probably water loaded, had probably had a couple gallons in the tank, whatever, but that's still too much weight. 46 pounds in 24 hours. I mean, late weigh-ins or not, that's just, that's not feasible. You know, and even if he had, even if he had pulled that kind of feet off before, cut that kind of weight, that's not what you want to do. You know what I mean? It's dangerous. I don't want to see anybody get seriously hurt cutting weight in the sport. I don't want to see anybody get seriously hurt in the sport in general, but this is the hurt business. But, you know, anything involving damage should be done while competing. It shouldn't be, you know, in the build up to a fight cutting weight. So, you know, it's a really, really tricky subject. What do you think the solution is going forward? I say no. I say get rid of weight cutting. Honestly, I mean, if that forces me up a weight class, so be it. You know what I mean? But um, you can add all the weight classes you want. You can change the time of weigh-ins. You can do all that. But there's still going to be guys that are cutting weight. There's still going to be guys that are endangering, endangering themselves, putting their health on the line. Um, and there's still going to be guys that miss weight. So it's one of those things where if you really want to curb the problem, you just got to get rid of weight cutting. You got to find a way to, to make us do hydration tests and – and, you know, whether it be same day weigh-ins or something, there's got to be a way to curb us away from weight cutting. You know, I also said if you want to keep weight cutting, you got to up the penalty. If you miss weight, 50% of your purse. You know what I mean? Really give guys an incentive not to miss weight. You know what I mean? That's, that's uh, There's a lot of work to be done on the forefront in terms of weight cutting. And I hope that it gets accomplished. And I hope it gets done before somebody gets hurt. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and another hot topic recently uh, was Greg Hardy as well, getting his, uh, uh, winning his fight in uh, the Contender Series and, and going on to, to you know, get a contract with the UFC. Obviously, he has um, a past with domestic uh, abuse. And uh, what's your opinion on, you know, that whole kind of topic surrounding him being uh, given that opportunity in the UFC? Well, he better not fuck it up. 
That's all I got to say about that. I mean, they say he wasn't charged with the case, but I actually was speaking to a fighter yesterday who had relations with one of Greg Hardy's ex, and I heard some of the harrowing details of uh, of what Greg Hardy and his manager had done, and, and it was appalling. You know what I mean? So um, the damage is done. He's in the UFC now, so let's just hope he doesn't fuck it up. Let's hope lightning doesn't strike twice. You know what I mean? Because that'd be very unfortunate. It'd be a bad look for the company. I mean, um, we're trying to grow this sport into a sport and be mainstream, and there's no room for acts of vigilance there's no room for domestic violence there's no we you know we need to be professionals so let's just hope that lightning doesn't strike twice he doesn't screw this up mm, yeah i agree on a on a brighter note your fight going back to your fight ufc 226 how do you uh, how do you see this unfolding how do you get the job done a, a finish or a dominant win by any means necessary you know what i mean i'm just excited to just go out there and lay it on the line and uh whether I finish him or I get a hard-fought decision, I just see myself getting my hand raised. Okay. Well, thank you very much for talking to me today. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to seeing you fight at UFC 226. Thank you. I thank appreciate you. it.